Hello and welcome. Today we will talk about color matching. Color matching is an extremely useful skill and it is a thing that I struggle with because it's basically trying to replicate on your palette a color that you see and you may not know how it's made or what to pick. Very often it happens that you pick a color and you say mm, is this the right color for uh, the situation that I need on my project? Maybe you, you start working on a, on a model and you think okay, what, what should I pick now from my paint track? What should I mix on my palette? How this person achieved this color? What is the, the color that I'm seeing on this, on this model that I like, for example? And many times we pick up a box of a, of a miniature that we want to paint and we want to replicate what, what there is in the, in the picture in front and we do not know where to start. So color matching is what is needed here. You see a color and you try to replicate it on your palette with what you have. And today we will do this, we learn how to do this with just three or four paints. So stay with me and we'll do it together. Okay, we'll try to color match now. But what is color matching? Color matching is try to replicate a color that you see or you have, but what you see is more important with your paints so that you can replicate something. Now I will show you how to match a paint for, uh, from other brands with Chimera Colors or acrylic in general, but the reason of this exercise is to match something you see or something you have so that you can learn better how to paint. This is the important part of this exercise and is useful in general. So as you can see, there are some colors there and they, they are pure pigments acrylic from Chimera Colors and the fact that they are pure is the important part for color matching because being a single pigment each color makes them very predictable when mixed and you cannot do color mixing in an effective way if you don't have pure colors and this is why it is these paints are very useful. The paints that we have here are the cold yellow, white, the red, thalo blue red shade, and royal brown from the expansion set. <clears throat> The royal brown is useful as a very dark color that is not blue tinted. So the, the theory here is when you color match, you need to have something to make a color lighter. And this is white and yellow for you. Something to make a color darker. And this is a dark blue and a brown. And the red is an intermediate tone. So... By mixing these colors, you can obtain basically anything, reasonably, let's say. And I'll show you how, what's the, what's the reasoning behind it. The first color that we tried to match is this one, that is the beige red from Vallejo. And it's a pinkish flesh tone of some kind. Uh, the first thing that you have to do to color match something is to achieve a similar value, meaning a color that is somewhat in the same level of light. And then you adjust the, the saturation and the tint. So by mixing, I can mix basically all the colors together, actually. You try to do a, a mix. This mix is too dark, as you can see. So to make it lighter, you need 
yellow or white so I will now add white to it okay this is similar in lightness okay they are not the same though exactly the same so when you see a color that is for example too red in this case it is too red you need to add the complementary of that color that means green you obtain green by blue and yellow together so if you want this to look less red you need to add a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow eventually so let's try that blue is very strong so let's pick just a touch And a little bit of yellow. Okay. Now the color is too dark because blue is a very dark color, so we need to add white. Now, as you can see, it is too far away from red, so we need to reintegrate the red that we lost. We lost too much of it but as you can see we now matched it they are practically identical one on, one and the next so this is how you do it with a light color now let's try with another one this one. This one is the Japan uniform from Vallejo, once again. So let's see what we can do here. So we have a color that is greenish, but we don't know what it is exactly. So let's try to achieve a similar color in, uh, in value and then we adjust it as probably a lot of green as you can see so let's start out with yellow and uh, really a touch of blue okay this is very green to remove the green you need to add a little bit of red okay it seems that it needs to be darker but I don't want it to be too blue, so I add the brown. Okay, this brown made it too reddish, so to remove red, once again, we need yellow and blue. Okay, we are already getting near this color. Maybe this is a little bit darker, so I need a touch of white, maybe. A bit too much. So I put some extra yellow in it. Touch of blue. To get it greener again. And the red and the brown and we are we are pretty near are pretty near just needs to be a little bit more more saturated okay this this one is redder actually so has a little bit more red and more yellow it's, it's stronger so we need to to make it more orange basically okay in my palette they are almost identical 
So as you as you can see, the the purpose of brown is to make a color darker without making it too green. And the, the or blue and the blue is for uh, the other nuances. Okay, I'll give you an interesting example now. To achieve this type of color that is towards the purplish, and it is a pale violet red from Reaper, the base color that I showed you before are not as good. You can get near, but you will always lack a little bit of something. And that something is the magenta that I put here. I dropped two, two droplets, but, but it's okay. So for a colder type of reds, the magenta is really useful. So in case you need to mix this type of stuff, use the magenta instead of the red. So I'll, I'll give you the example. So let's start with white, plus magenta. This really too strong. Now it's too violet to counteract the violet. We need the yellow. Okay, we are getting near. This is maybe too light. Let's try with some brown to not move it towards the blues. And we are now getting near the this color. This is more light. So let's try with a touch of yellow, a of white too. Too much. And let's charge it back with magenta. And now we have it a really similar color. Okay, I changed the palette. I put black instead of brown because if you don't have brown, you can, you can use black. It will shift the colors less to the blue, less to the green than the blue. So it's useful to, to desaturate and make color darker eventually. And I put this camo green because often a lot of historical painters, they they want a specific uniform color. So these type of colors are usually very high in demand, but you can match this type of color too without any major problems. So it is a green. So let's start. Let's start with blue and yellow. This is too light. So we need to make it darker, not with blue because it will be too blue, it's too much green already. So we need red to make it darker because it's a desaturated, desaturated color. As you can see, we are already nearing it, but we need it to be darker. So maybe it needs some black. Hmm? This is very similar already. I think this one has a little bit of extra red actually than the other. Yes. Now it's a bit too dark. So I need to put back some yellow to make it lighter. Maybe a little blue to make it greener. So 
Okay, as you can see, they are the same now. So this is how you can you can get a camo green and any any shade of military colors you can achieve like this. And this is extremely extremely useful to to know because by knowing that this color, because now we remixed it, is just a red, yellow, blue, and a little bit of black. We understand with the ratio, we understand how this is made, and this will help us shade in it, for example, or lighten it, for example. Having this knowledge and trying to do this is extremely useful. It is a very important skill to have. So I encourage you to try and color match whatever you see to get the grasp of it and get the understanding of the colors in general. Shark. Let's show a, now a favorite of miniature painters. This is the sunny skin tone, carne dorada. This one is used a lot especially by the Spanish painters to, to make things lighter in general. And they usually tell you, do not use white to highlight stuff. Use a pinkish color like this one. And they are somewhat right because if you use just white, you desaturate stuff, you know, like this. As you can see, this is very desaturated. And if you highlight it with this other one, it is more saturated. No? It's pretty evident. So this is why they suggest to, to use a color like this. But understanding how it's made is very useful for, uh, for your arsenal because this one has a lot of white in it. You are adding white actually, plus other colors. So let's see how it's made. Because it is reddish, so let's use red. But this one is more red than this, of course, no? So we need other colors. So let's use yellow. Hmm. This is orange and this is darker, so let's add white. To match the value. Still more white needed. Huh. They are starting to become very similar now. Still more white is needed. As you can see, there is more, more white. And now what we lack is probably yellow. This looks yellower than the other one. So let's increase the yellow. This one is more red, so let's add a touch of red. Okay, they are very similar now. Maybe this one is a little less saturated, so I increase both the red and the yellow a little bit. Now it's darker, more white. It is an act of balance, of course. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay, let's spread this other one a little bit more to understand. Okay, it's a touch lighter. Just a touch. And a touch yellower. Okay. Now in my palette they are almost the same on screen it seems a little redder but hey they are they are almost the same right now this is just fine tuning but why why did i make this this is to show and this is important it is to show that this color is a lot of white and just a little bit of red and quite a bit of yellow so when you highlight anything with a color like this with a skin tone let's say like this you're actually adding a lot of white plus quite a bit of yellow plus a touch of red it's a, a yellow orangey plus white color so you are highlighting a miniature with a lot of white already with a color like this the, the important trick in this part is that when you highlight something, do not just add white. You need white plus something. And this is, this is the reason. And it's also, it's also important to know that a color like that one is a lot of white because when you mix it with other stuff, you need to remember, okay, but I'm putting a lot of white in it. I'll show you another color that I love, that is the Unbleached Titanium from Liquitex. It's a nice, nice color for skin tone. Put it here. And to match that one, it's a, as you can see, it's a lot of white already. So I'll directly put the white. With the white near, you see that it's different. This one has a touch of red. A bit more. But now the difference in red is a lot. So we need to tone down the red. And uh, to tone down the red, we need a green. So I put, put yellow. In the little, very little speck of blue. And here it is, we have uh, our unbleached titanium. So you see that this knowledge of color and how to increase or decrease the component of a color can play in our ends. So when a color in comparison to the one you have is too much red, you need a little bit of blue and yellow. When it is too much yellow, you need a little bit of red and blue. When it is too much blue, you need a little bit of red and yellow. When it is too green, green is blue plus yellow, so you need red. When it is too orange, you need blue. Okay, this is how color theory help you because you can move your colors a little bit towards the direction that you need. That's it for today. I hope you liked the video. If you do, please subscribe and put a like on this video. Remember that these videos are sponsored by LegasAward.com. If you like our products, you want to find the Chimera Colors, you can go there and buy our tutorials, colors and moments. And see you next time. Bye!